Okay, in this video, I'm going over the PTAIDA modeling lab itself. Um, so here's the general process. View this brief video. This video is only for the directions for what you'll be doing in this lab. I've made a mini lecture going over increment that explains growth, specifically focused on mean annual increment. Review that. You'll need to know that information. Then view the PTAIDA lab where I show you how to use the software itself, and I use some examples from this lab. Finally, read the lab handout that's going to be attached to an email to you and available on the course website. Read that in detail. It works you through all this step by step and includes screenshots. Only once you've done all that should you start working on this lab. This lab contains a lot of parts and you'll be working with a partner. So if you start before you fully understand everything you're going to be doing, you are going to either one, make mistakes that are easily avoidable or two, you're very likely to leave out some of the things I'm asking for and you won't earn as good a grade as you should have on this lab. So work through this process, review everything, only then should you start working on this lab. Okay, so with this lab, you'll be working with one partner, uh, not two people, not three people. You each only work with one other person. We have an even number in the class, so this should work. If you can't find a partner, just email me and I'll get emails from everyone else who can't find a partner and I'll pair you up so you all can work together. Be, it's very important you follow all social distancing guidelines and COVID requirements in the computer labs around the building. Um, no getting within six feet of each other and then make sure there's only, you know, the certain number of computers being used in a room at each time. Our class doesn't have priority on this. We don't have the computer lab scheduled for any given time. Um, I have spoken with Dr. Kidd and you all are going to be allowed to use the plans lab if the plan students aren't using it. So uh, make sure that you find a computer lab at a time when you're allowed to be in there where you're not interfering with the class that's currently being taught. Um, and do not wait till the last minute. There are 52 of you in class this semester. If you wait till the last minute, we don't have 52 computers you guys can all use at the last minute here. And this software is not on any other computers. You all need to start spacing yourself out throughout the week. Do not wait until the last minute. Coming and emailing me five minutes before it's doing and saying there's not a computer I can use right now is not going to count as an excuse. If you've been given plenty of notice on this, you had time to work on it. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, part of your grade is going to be you all competing in pairs with one another. Uh, so your pair is competing against every other pair submitting the assignment. That will only count for part of your grade, not your whole grade. Uh, but if you end up growing your stands better than other teams, you'll score better than them. Okay, so here's what you're actually submitting. You're going to submit a Word document. In that Word document, it will contain four stand and stock tables. Those stand and stock tables look in the PTA to video. I've shown you how to format them, how to get them in Excel, how to copy them into Word, all that. Those four are the HGT stand we visited for lab last week, right now at age 12. Then you're going to run a bunch of different modeling scenarios in PTAIDA for that HGT stand, and you're going to come up with your best rotation, and you're going to submit one stand and stock table. I've shown you in the video towards the end of it how to include different rows for thinning, so be sure you include those rows. And I'm trying to simplify each of these scenarios for you so that you can do them in a reasonable amount of time. So your only options on the HGT plantation, you're allowed to not thin it. You can thin it one time with a row thin first, or you can thin it twice, where it's a row thin first and a low thin second, okay? I show you in the PK in a video how to do this. No applying fertilizer mid-rotation, no pruning. And I'm eliminating those treatments so you have fewer options, so it's easier for you to work through. Include your prescription, a brief outline of what you did in your prescription in your caption for that table. So your caption for that table needs to say, it was grown to a rotation length of blah, blah, blah years, um, it was thinned once at age, whatever, and here were our guidelines on the thinning. Include brief prescription information in your caption. Your final two stand and stock tables are listed in the handout I emailed you, and that's hypothetical stand A, hypothetical stand B, and on those stands you are not permitted to thin them. May not be the most realistic, but again, I'm trying to make this workload manageable for you. You can do whatever different establishment treatments you want. You can apply fertilizer mid-rotation. Um, also, no thinning on these. For all four of these scenarios, I want to see you include the mean annual increment with correct units in the table caption. 
So you have to correctly format each table. We know how to format tables with the right number of lines, with the right caption in the right place. Make sure you include mean annual increment in each table caption there. But other than that, you know, just make sure your name and your partner's name is on the Word document, email it to me. Um, and as long as it has the four tables in there, you're good. Do your best not to split these table across pages. So, um, so those are the guidelines on the assignment. Um, let me provide you a few more guidelines here and we will go ahead and we will type these up as notes as we work through this. Um, so let me get the new share going here. Okay, well, let me type it up on PowerPoint here. It's not giving me an option uh, for our workboard, our whiteboard. Okay, so uh, let's look at operational thinning. All the thinnings you do in this assignment need to be operational. And operational in this case is going to equal commercial. We don't want to thin anything pre-commercially. That doesn't meet our landowner objective. Okay. Um, and so for a commercial thin to happen, you need to remove 20 or more merchantable tons per acre. Typically, we manage our stands within a basal area range of maybe 60 to 135 feet squared per acre. You can exceed 135 square feet per acre, and you don't have to thin it all the way down to 60. That's just a typical management range, okay? Just be aware that the higher you go above 135 square feet per acre, the more likely you are to run into southern pine beetle or other potential disturbances, the more mortality you may be accumulating. Generally, we're not thinning a stand until our quadratic mean diameter equals six inches or more. Um, that's going to be hard to see on these standard stock tables that it outputs, but if you have that merchantable volume, you should be at that QMD of six inches. And then generally, we need height to equal 40 feet or more. Now, you're going to get heights lifted, listed by different diameter class here in the PTA to output. Don't worry about that too much, okay? Uh, if some of your heights are less than 40, but some are 40, some are more than 40, it's fine. If you can get this merchantable tonnage out of your stand, it is going to be operational. And again, I mentioned it, but your first thin needs to be a row, and it's called a row plus low in the software. Second thin equals a low thin on that. Okay? So that gives you some guidelines on how to make decisions on should you thin, should you not thin. Now, how do you determine which prescription is the best? Well, we're going over mean annual increment this week. More mean, mean annual increment is better, right? You're growing more wood, which is making you more money, which is this landowner's objective. Now, let's look at an MAI of six. Say you can get an MAI of six tons per acre per year. Well, if you have one prescription that does that and makes you a ton of saw timber, the other prescription does that and makes you less saw timber, more saw timber is better. That's going to be a higher value product, okay? Um, so I think that's all the guidelines that you need on this lab, uh, but feel free to shoot me an email ask me any questions that you may have.